Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is Wednesday. Uh, this is Lunchtime with Lord, our daily devotion. And I uh, trust that your Wednesday is going well. And here we are at the middle part of another week. And I want to invite you to stay. Uh, continue watching the video. Like, share the video. Uh, comment, let us know who's watching. Let's uh, share it to see, uh, allow more people to see the video and have them give them an opportunity to join in on our Bible study. I'll give you an opportunity also, well, also to go ahead and get your Bible if you're able uh, where you're at and when you're watching the video. Second Thessalonians is where we're at. If you've been watching this, of course, you know that. Chapter 3 is where we'll be at today. While you're getting that, uh, getting prepared for the, the Bible lesson, Bible devotion today, uh, let me just get share a, a quick update about my family. Uh, most everyone knows that I tested positive for COVID Saturday. Uh, the whole family tested negative with the rapid test on Sunday morning, but then the regular test come back and Gwen had tested positive and the other two, uh, Christy and Madison, had not. They were negative. And Gwen Monday started showing uh, symptoms with fever, and that's her main symptom. She runs a fever. When the medicine wears off, it spikes again, and you know how that makes uh, someone feel when they're, uh, uh, they're lethargic and and uh, but then when the, the fever comes down a little bit she'll play a little bit and so she's probably struggling a little bit more uh, with COVID than I did um, I, I of course was vaccinated my wife in Madison um, was vaccinated and I believe that's helped with uh, very minor symptoms and my, my, my minor symptoms have almost gone I have uh, the um, congestion is almost all the way gone uh, compared to where it was and um, I haven't had fever for a couple of days now at least. And uh, so praise the Lord for that. And, and uh, Christy and, and Madison were subjected to it. Uh, you know, they should have got it really, uh, but they didn't and they still have it. And so praise the Lord for that. And, um, and uh, I, I brought it home to, to Gwen, poor Gwen. We, 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 she likes to share breakfast with me every morning, and I know that's where she, uh, she was really subjected to it. And then I carry her, usually carry her back and forth to the car and, and such. And so, so pray for her. She's, uh, she has good moments and, and then doesn't feel good for a while because of those fevers. All right, uh, second Thessalonians, that's where we are as a family. So we won't be there tonight, of course, um, because of the quarantining and such. And uh, But hope you will be at church tonight if you're able to be there. If not, be able to tune in live stream. What's what our family will do tonight. Second Thessalonians chapter number three. And we're going to look at two verses today. Two verses and uh, verse number eight and verse number nine. Uh, if you'll recall and you watched the video yesterday, Paul talked to, uh, he kind of exhorted them not to walk disorderly as others did. Uh, and we talked about that word disorderly uh, really had a dual meaning. It can mean lazy. And of course, it could have the meaning that we normally think of disorderly outside of the bounds, uh, walking, uh, kind of rebelling against truth. And then uh, the next verse, verse 7, uh, Paul talked about how he gave them an example to follow after him. And verse number eight and verse number nine continues that kind of uh, kind of thinking or that, that subject matter of being an example, Paul being an example to the Christians there at Thessalonica. And this was in the matter of uh, Paul not taking a salary. Now notice verse eight and verse nine. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Verse nine but because we have, uh, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. And so uh, Paul is, here is talking about not taking a salary or uh, really not taking advantage of Christian hospitality. Not that he would refuse that, uh, but you'll find over in Acts chapter, uh, I have it written down over here, Acts chapter number 18, uh, that the Apostle Paul, uh, he did have a... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, a secular job, I guess you could say. He was a tent maker, and he used that to help fund uh, much of his his uh, his needed uh, money to to uh, to work in the ministry. And so there were several uh, churches that he did not take a salary from uh, because there was people in that day, and there is in this day as well, that were hirelings. Uh, they were uh, in it to fleece the people and take all that they could from them and take advantage of them in the name of religion. And we have that today. You see it. You turn your TV on. You see that. 
uh, send sow, sow your seed and send in your money and all those things while they're flying around on private jets and all those things. And, uh, and some of them thinking they, they need money raised to get a bigger private jet. You, you've seen all that. You've heard the stories. And so it was a problem in, in Paul's day and in our day, of course, um, there's money to be made in the name of religion. And so Paul uh, took the stance as he's planting these churches and trying to minister the gospel to do his best to not allow that to be something that can be laid to his charge, even though he wasn't guilty of it, even though that was not something that he was uh, in it for. He was not certainly in it for the money, but he did it, he did it this way to just help reassure, to, to help authenticate uh, his, his, um, uh, his, his, not just the message, but also his motive behind delivering the message, that they were pure motives. They were there to, he was there for the right reason. It was not for money. And so Paul here is talking about a verse I'm reading about that, how uh, neither, he said, neither did we eat man's bread for rot. In other words, he wasn't a freeloader in Thessalonica. He wasn't there taking advantage of them. Certainly there was times, I know he didn't turn down Christian hospitality, but on other occasions, he, he paid his own way, if you will, and all to help his testimony before them. And, um, and then he goes on and talks about rot with labor and travail night and day uh, <clears throat> that we might not be chargeable to any of you. And that's, that's talking about not taking a salary. Uh, we know, as I said, Acts chapter 18, he worked at a secular job and it helped to, to fund those things. And he gave them an, an example now remember what he was talking about yesterday in the two verses that were uh, disorderly about being lazy and such. He said, we give you an example. We weren't there being freeloaders. We were there working, serving, uh, serving the Lord, but also helping to pay our own way. And so he said, we're giving you an example here to follow him in his conduct and not those that were walking disorderly. And uh, he, he did his best to pay his own expenses and not be a freeloader. And, and uh, really help his testimony because there was people that uh, we've talked about several times about that stood up in opposition uh, that would lie, try to discredit him and his ministry. And several times in Paul's writings, he, he spends a great length of, uh, of Scripture defending his ministry about his motive and, and that, that he came uh, with pure hearts and all those things. And so one of the ways that Paul helped to uh, reassure people that he wasn't one of those hirelings or charlatans was that he didn't many times didn't take a salary and, and tried to pay his own way uh, to show that this was uh, the motive behind what he did. He said, this is an example for you. He said, don't be like those that walk in disorder, those that are being lazy. And he said, we gave you an example. And uh, of course, Apostle Paul is a great example for us and uh, of having that heart for people. Paul's heart was for people. And uh, whether he got paid or whether he didn't get paid, Paul was going to do the ministry. Uh, whether, you know, he, he talks about uh, whatever, in other places in the Word of God, whatever state he's found himself in, whether he's in want or whether he's in excess, he says, you know, I've, 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 I've uh, figured out how to be content. And, and I, I believe Paul, whether he's going to get paid, whether he's going to get uh, the support that he needed, would whatever. He was going to try to find a way to do what God had called him to do. And what a challenge for us as Christians. It's not about the recognition. It's not about the uh, uh, someone acknowledging us in the work of the Lord. It's not about uh, any of that. Uh, although those are wonderful, those those encourage you. It's about serving the Lord. As Paul said, you know, the love, the love of Christ constraineth me. And he was in it for the right reason. And uh, God sees our motive. And Paul knew that God seen his motive behind what he did, but he tried to do his best to show that, hey, I'm doing this out of the right reason. Now, when you turn your TV on, you see a lot of people that are not doing it for the right reason. They're after the, the money. And the Bible tells us the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money, money itself, but the love of money is the root of all evil. And Paul said, you know what? I didn't come here to be a freeloader. I, I didn't I didn't want to be chargeable to you. He said, we did our best to pair away. In many places, he did that. And so that maintained a good testimony and uh, that people could see that his motives were pure uh, in, in bringing and preaching and establishing his church. Hey, I hope this has been a little bit inf informative, to, uh, you know, some information for you and help, helpful to you, and uh, maybe even a challenge that we would keep our motives uh, pure what, to do what we do while we serve the Lord is because of what he's done for us, and nothing more, nothing less. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday, and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow on Thursday's edition of Lunchtime with the Lord. God bless you.